everybody it's eric arcadian and this is a guitar what's that you knew that already okay okay fair enough either way i'm going to talk about guitars today including some history anatomy technique and a little on how to play i'll even tell you the story of this haunted guitar which comes complete with ghosts Ooh, spooky let's get started What we know of as the guitar has been around for probably like 200 years. There are several different types in use today, but they're all classified as chordophones, which are instruments where the initial sound is produced by a stretched, vibrating string. Other instruments in the chordophone family include lutes, harps, lyres, bows, and zithers. I mean, I guess you could also call them all like stringed instruments, but that's just so boring. Let's go over some basic guitar anatomy. Neck, body, strings, headstock, tuners, bridge, nut, frets, fretboard, sound hole. I have three types of guitars sitting here with me today. A nylon string classical guitar, a steel string acoustic guitar, and an electric guitar. So what's the difference? Classical guitars usually have a wider neck and string spacing, which makes them a great choice for finger-style heavy types of music like classical or flamenco. They usually have a warm and balanced tone, which makes them excellent solo instruments. Nylon is also much softer than steel, so there's less of an impact to your fingertips. Prior to the popularization of nylon strings around the time of World War II, these types of guitars would be strung with strings made from cow or sheep intestine. Steel string acoustic guitars became popular with blues and folk musicians in the early 1900s. When compared to classical guitars, they have a twangier or more metallic sound. As the name implies, the strings are made from a steel core that is wrapped in another metal like copper or bronze. And finally, electric guitars became popular in the mid 20th century with brand names like Fender and Gibson. There's like a thousand different body styles like Les Paul, Telecaster, Stratocaster, SG, Mustang, so on and so forth. And to make it all just a little bit more confusing, they all come in several different forms. For instance, this is a Telecaster style body, but it is also a semi-hollow body. Basically, electric guitars don't produce that much sound on their own. So you plug them into an amplifier to get more tone. More tone. More tone. As far as tuning goes, most guitars are tuned to E standard, which starting from the thickest string goes E, A, D, G, B, E. And the way to remember that is every alligator does good before eating. Eat all day, get big easy. Every amateur does get better eventually. Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Let's learn some technique. Now, assuming a standard playing position, your right hand is going to pick or strum the strings and your left hand is going to fret the notes. A lot of people will start out using a pick in the right hand to strum with, and that does tend to make things a little bit easier because that way we can really concentrate on the chord forms in the left hand. Now, once you have a few chord forms memorized, you can start strumming and playing along with some of your favorite songs, which helps make practicing fun instead of just laborious and painful. There are three chords you will use all the time in pagan music. 
They are A minor, E minor, and G major. I've sat around and transcribed the melodies and accompaniment to several pagan chants, and those just seem to be the chords that come up most of the time, or at least help you get most of the way through the song. Luckily, they're easy to play. A minor looks like this. E minor looks like this. G major looks like this. Or like this. Or like this. Or like this. So this will let you play a lot of well-known pagan songs. For instance, She's been waiting, waiting. She's been waiting so long. She's been waiting for her children to remember to return. Or everyone's favorite. We all come from the goddess. And to her we shall return like a drop of rain. Flowing to the so with guitar, you can really do a lot. You can pick out the individual notes in the melody. You can strum the chords like we were just doing. Or you can put them both together in a chord melody. And once you start getting familiar and comfortable with doing things those various ways, it really starts to open up a whole new world in your personal sound. All right, let's fucking play this thing. So there are people who devote their entire lives to learning and mastering the guitar. I mean, I've been playing for like 20 years, give or take a drug-induced hiatus or two. And while I'm comfortable with things, I'm still learning. In terms of beginner playing difficulty, I'm gonna rate it a four out of five. It's not something that you just sit down and play. It does require a bit of preparation and a bit of practice. But once you get past learning some basic chord forms, you'll see how you can start to play along with almost anything. Okay, now, does a guitar make a good instrument to use during ritual? I'm actually gonna say no. And honestly, guys, it pains me to say that. I love guitar. Your mileage may vary, but for me, stringed instruments are not the most efficient way to get into a trance state. Can I do it? Yes. Is it the most efficient way? No. If you want a strange experience, try bringing a guitar to a drum circle. On the surface, it seems like that should work out just fine, but it doesn't, at least not for me. There's a different energy, almost like there's an entirely different element at play. There was something else to talk about, though. Oh, right, the haunted guitar. I almost forgot. <clears throat> 
So. Well, I tried to tell the haunted guitar story just now, and you know what happened? My iPhone froze, then my MacBook froze, and everything just sat there for 30 minutes, and it wouldn't let me record anymore. So you know what I did? I made a fucking smoothie. And it's delicious. <sighs> okay. I'm going to try one more time. Please do not ruin my video with your ghost powers. So, one day I was packing some things up in our storage unit, and this old lady walked by. She saw that I had some musical equipment. She asked if I was a musician. I said yes, and she disappeared for like five minutes, and then she came back with this. She explained that it was her dead husband's guitar and that she needed to give it to a musician and she wanted to give it to me. So she did. I thanked her and told her that at some point in the future, I would fix it up and do something with it, which I clearly haven't yet. And obviously that makes me susceptible to all types of ghost curses. Anyway, I lovingly call it the dead man's guitar, and yes, maybe someday I'll do something with it, but for now, it just makes a nice prop in the background in a lot of my videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram at Eric Arcadian, but if you'd like to help support me making more content or get access to download my music or early releases, you can check out my Patreon page at Eric Arcadian. But seriously, guys, leave a comment below or something because you have no idea what a difference it makes if I know that you're listening. Remember, there's always a way to make music. Until next time.